Welcome back, everyone, to another episode on Living Your Greatness. I'm your host, Ben Mummy. And if you are new to my show, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. So today we have a new guest to the show, and her name is Jess Bergio. So for those of you that don't know Jess, she is a self-proclaimed hype girl who's passionate and is helping you build the confidence to chase your dreams. She is a former beauty entrepreneur of 22 years. She is the founder and host of her own highly rated podcast show, which is called Unscripted. And she is an author, podcast mentor, speaker, and rock star mom helping entrepreneurs connect their voice to their brand through podcasting. So without further ado, Jess, welcome to the show. Pleasure to have you on today. Thank you. And I love that you added rock star in front of the mom because that is literally my favorite role most days. <laughs> Totally, totally. And I love to, you know, I think uh, it's part of your identity, right? So why hide that, right? So absolutely. Uh, before we get kicking here, you know, I figure let's kind of start with, you know, a, a warm up question here. So tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what inspired you to make the transition from a successful beauty entrepreneur to then the world of podcasting and content creation? Mm. Great question. I know everybody wants to know, like, how did you get where you are? It always seems easy to look back at someone's journey on social and quickly see how they may have pivoted in what looked like short time or record time. But for me, it really started with the exact thing we kicked this off with was my son. You know, in different seasons of your life, you can run at different paces and different things are a priority or seem to be that carrot, if you will, in your life, right? You're chasing money, success, you know, visibility, validation, whatever that might be. And I remember thinking after, you know, a few years of trying to do both the way I used to do them, you know, being a mom now and then running my business that I was missing out on a lot of things that I wasn't ever going to get an opportunity to redo, right? His, his little years and the little things where I was passing them off to grandma, um, started to weigh on me and I started to feel like I was really missing out. And I don't know about you or the listeners, but FOMO can be one of your greatest, you know, motivators to take action on something. And so for me, I looked at my life and where I was at, I was probably at the peak of my career. I had built my business back up after going back to the salon, after taking a little time off when I had him and looked at where I was and thought, you know, life's pretty good right now. And if I do nothing different, will I be happy with this for the next five, 10, 15, 20 years? And the answer was kind of mixed. It wasn't a, a resounding like, hell no, I got to change and do something big. It was, yeah. But that little voice inside of me was like, there's, you're meant for something a little bit bigger. I don't think this is it. So I didn't get this download from the universe that was like, this is your next thing. Like take a left here, quit everything, burn the boats. I wish it would have been that clear. I wish I could have had some experience like that. But I think what, you know, kind of taking a look at what I currently was doing, I thought, why do I have to wait till I'm so uncomfortable or hate it or have an even greater level of FOMO to take action on seeing what else is possible for me? And so I like to say that I manifested uh, Chris and Lori Harder starting the very first round of Fast Foundations, which was a business mastermind helping you scale your online business. And at the time, Chris had an elite level mastermind for entrepreneurs making a half a million or more in their business. And I remember looking at what I was currently doing and looking at people sitting in that particular room thinking, I'm probably never going to get to sit in that room if I keep doing what I'm currently doing. There's only one of me. I'm not really able to scale the stuff that I do currently. What would it look like? If I took a chance on myself and joined this, you know, entry level mastermind for, he used a term that stuck with me, accidental entrepreneurs. And that's kind of the boat I found myself in in my early years as a hairdresser was I went into hairdressing at 18 years old. I didn't really have a clear mindset on becoming the CEO of my business or being an entrepreneur. In fact, probably the opposite. I was looking for a safe, secure, fun, you know, schedule, flexibility career because both my parents were entrepreneurs and all they did was work. And so I hardly ever saw them. So I didn't really have a, you know, rainbow picture of what entrepreneur shirt entrepreneurship look like. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to have fun. And that's what took me into the beauty industry. So 
long story long, I connected with Chris and I said, Hey, you kind of have this little small fine print that says you have to be making 50,000 or more in your online business to join this mastermind. I'm making well over that in my other business. Would you consider having me in this first round? Because I feel like I really need some help. And it looks like these mastermind rooms are where like magic happens. And of course, A, he's a good salesman, but B, he was like, listen, Jess, you know, I'd been done a lot of fitness stuff with his wife over the years. He goes, if you really are curious, like take the leap, get in the room, see if these people can help you figure out what that next thing is for you. And I promise at minimum, you'll walk away with some new high level friends who will push you into that next phase and be able to hold that space for you and so on and so forth. So I made the biggest investment of my life personally at that point, you know, without really a clear ROI and just said, F it. Let's spend the next six months exploring what this could look like. And, you know, it not only effed up my whole life, it also brought in the most joy and expansion and it has been this residual effect of everything you've seen and see me have now. So that's kind of where everything came from. I'm so really close with them. I ended up working for that mastermind shortly after uh, and really getting to learn what it looks like for people as they struggle through pivots or through ideas or that feeling, that knowingness, like I know I meant to do something different or what I'm currently doing isn't serving me anymore. So I, I got a lot of really good hands-on experience with stepping into that space holding. Like I like to call myself a, a space holder because I did do it for 20 plus years behind the chair. It was kind of like the skills that I didn't realize I was perfecting, if you will. So yeah, the podcast ended up being a natural evolution of getting in that room, seeing what other people were doing, knowing that I loved to communicate. You know, I love talking. It's what I you do as a hairdresser. If you've ever been to the hairdresser, you know, most of us are chatty Cathy's probably got in trouble in school for talking too much. We're a little bit nosy. We like to ask questions. We need to be able to communicate with you. So really, I looked at all of the things I thought, soft skills, I guess you can call them, that I learned over the years and thought, I think I'd be really good at podcasting. I wasn't in the beginning, but I got better. And you know, like anything with the reps you put in, you can become a master at something if you really get clear and focused. And so now I get to call myself a podcast host. Uh, the show has almost 60,000 downloads and we're close to like 200 and I don't know, 50 episodes at this point. So good numbers, not great. I'm on my way to, you know, where I want to be, but yeah, that's, that's long story long. That's me in a nutshell right now. I love that. Yeah. Thanks for, you know, sharing with us, you know, your, your why, which I think is a lot of things, you know, start off with family, right? How could you develop more time wealth, um, you know, to put towards, to be part of that, that kind of journey of, of kind of seeing, you know, your boy grow and all that stuff. And then I also loved hearing about, you know, the greater purpose, right. Greater purpose of, you felt like you had more potential than, you know, just being an entrepreneur or like in terms of like the beauty side. Right. And right. you felt like you had a, you know, a gift with obviously conversation and, you know, connecting with other like-minded individuals and showcasing their stories. And uh, I think that's beautiful. Um, and something that I want to kind of pinpoint is, you know, it can be really hard, you know, making that shift. You know, there's so many aspects uh, that go into podcasting. You kind of touched upon it in terms of the craft of getting better with every conversation, how to market. There's so many aspects that goes into having a website, Right. So it's a lot more than just conversation, right? Um, Definitely. So first question I kind of want to hop into here is it can be really intimidating to start, right? So if someone right now is is thinking of making that shift or, you know, aspire to maybe give more purpose, um, what would you recommend to them? Well, I would definitely seek out mentorship because like anything, you can figure it out on your own. We all have Google University. We all have access to look things up. You probably know somebody who has a podcast. And if you don't, they probably know somebody. So I have a microphone that sits in the back of my office to remind me of how long I it took me to muster up the courage to start my show. I was one of those people, maybe like you listening, if you tuned to the show, hoping to learn something about podcasting was I thought I had to have this clear idea of exactly who I was going to be speaking to and exactly about what I wanted to talk about. I had to have my cover art, my music, my, all the things like dialed in before I could hit record on some platform. So there are so many ways to get from A to B, right? So to start something is usually the hardest part. We all know that, right? That first day at the gym, that first run, you're like, let me just get to the end of the block. That first podcast recording, it's probably not going to sound the way you want it to. 
And how many times, maybe someone listening now, have you listened to yourself on stories on Instagram and thought, oh my God, that sounds terrible. And you don't post it. Or you overthink like a video that you created. Therefore, you have no videos on your social media because you don't like how any of them come out or you're not even willing to have them be messy. And and I wouldn't say make fun of yourself, but just acknowledge where you're at because your growth could be the exact thing that someone needs to see in order to take action. So that's why I like getting on shows like this to talk about, you know, the beginning, the messy middle and everything in between. And I got so passionate because that was the hardest part was for me was to start. And then along the way, the were so many missed opportunities with my show as far as marketing, as far as like, you know, asking for help to get that out there. And then as far as putting myself on, let's say a podcast tour to guest on other people's shows to mix with other people's audiences. So the first place to start is I would, I would ask for help, whatever that looks like for you. If you're in a position to pay for help, I would say go as big as you can. If you can reach out to an agency, that's why we finally created the agency because I felt like I wanted to create a one-stop shop for people who were like, listen, I'm busy. Yes, I feel a little intimidated, but I'm actually more overwhelmed with the idea of creating the beginning pieces of it. I don't even know which goes first or how to do anything. I just need some help, some accountability. Give me a little bit of a framework. Like, what do I do? And most people, if you put them on the right treadmill, they can run. But they're like, I don't know which treadmill to get on. Where do I start? What do I do? What comes first? And so that's where we come in and we really help you get clear and focused. And then I get the ability to sit in with you each and every month to figure out your strategy for your business. Is the podcast driving traffic to a business you currently have? Is it just creating like visibility and awareness that you even exist? You're like, Hey, it's me, Jess. Like, I just want you to get to know me. Here's kind of what I'm about. I can talk about my life. I can talk about my passions. I can talk about things I'm interested in. That's the freedom of having a podcast. It's yours. You own it. You can create anything you want. You can talk about anything you want. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that have awesome conversations with their girlfriends or their guy friends or their spouse and think, man, that conversation probably could have really helped somebody. So there is no wrong way to start. And there are very free ways to start. And there are very you know, more elaborate ways to start. Like I have friends that are in the entrepreneurship space that have the means to go big, right? They're building a couple hundred thousand dollar studios in their offices. They're getting full teams. They're just doing the damn thing. But then there's those of us who we're not quite sure what the big vision is. We know that there's a calling that we want to start. And I would say, rip the bandaid off, sit down, write yourself a little bio or have your closest friends write some really nice things about you and who you are, put that together in a description, post it, get an Apple account and, and start from there. So it's a lot easier than you think. Well, you know, and uh, you know what I want to add to that? You know, you, you had some good points, especially about first thing is just start and embrace the process. You know, it's okay to suck at the beginning, but also enjoy that kind of self-improvement, right? Being 1% better with, with each episode. And then mm-hmm. I think the other main thing that I would agree is, having that support network, whether it's a mentor or a fellow creator, you know, to give feedback and also to deliberately, you know, enhance like your practice of, of like the craft. Right. Um, so it's, it's great for like, you know, my listeners obviously to hear, you know, that piece of advice. I think it's not just putting out the quantity in terms of the reps and, and, you know, looking to grow on your own, but also looking to get the support in terms of deliberate practice. Right. Yes. Um, so I love that. Um, something that I want to, you know, ask you though, is, you know, I'm sure there are some skill sets, right. Even in our previous work, like for example, you know, I've, I've, I told you earlier on, you know, I was a former high level athlete and, you know, there's different skill sets that you learn, you know, like for me, I I think my, my biggest skill set is is my mind, right. Like my mindset and how I've applied that in everything that I do in life, whether it's academically, whether it's professionally, whether it's, you know, writing, anything I do, my mindset's very strong. But when you were in the beauty world, right, what were some maybe valuable life lessons or maybe skill sets that you've realized that you've actually applied into what you currently do now as a podcaster or even a mentor and a coach? Listening, being able to actually listen to whether it's a guest, let's say we'll use podcasting first and foremost as like a skill set I felt transferred over over really well. As a hairdresser, if I didn't listen to exactly what my clients were saying, 
there was a good possibility that I might do something wrong and get not give them the result that they wanted. So it was a very clear, you know, definition of, you know, asking more questions, getting to the meat of like, why do you want to cut all your hair off today? (laughs) Why do you want to cut bangs? Why do you want to go from blonde to black? A lot of times it was so much deeper than the hair. And so I realized that actually transferred into coaching because a lot of times people will come to you with what they think is the quote unquote problem. But really when you ask a few levels deeper, there's other things underlying that that's actually the first, the first thing they said wasn't the actual problem that they're having. It stemmed from a mindset issue around maybe they didn't have boundaries. That's why they feel so overwhelmed and, you know, why no one's listening and take, like everyone's taking advantage of them. So once we go down that funnel and ask better questions, we start to notice what the real shit is. And so as a podcaster, I thought I had to have these curated questions. I had to like know the exact right thing to ask and that I was somehow going to know that before I had the guest on. So I started to do things out of what I saw other people doing. Did they have rapid fire in the beginning? Did they have specific closing questions? Did they do it this way? Did they, did they, did they, what did they do? Now, while I think it's great to see what like trending people are doing, if you're aspiring to be like somebody or even mirror some of the stuff, but you have to listen intuitively to your creative self. We all have like a creative part about us. And so after several episodes, I started to realize I was just waiting to ask these curated questions and not really listening. So the thing I was really good at, I stopped doing. So therefore we were getting these kind of choppy interviews and they weren't as like fluid or conversational as if it was me actually being me. And so, you know, the skill sets that I remember learning, I am a good listener. I do know how to give people what they want and, or redirect conversations in a way that like makes sense. Right. Cause I knew what my show was for in the beginning. the reason I started my show is because we were locked down in COVID. My salon was closed and I had a space and I was ready to facilitate this podcast, but I didn't have a clear vision on who the podcast was going to be for. Therefore I couldn't come up with a name. I couldn't come up with like the content. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to start this show right now for my industry out of respect, because I feel like we need to have conversations right now. This is a very hard time. We're all struggling. Let me start here. And so those conversations flowed well enough. And I think we were all in a place of unknown, but yeah, those skill sets from the salon were that of listening, of really getting to the bottom of, of things. And so naturally, if you're curious, if you're someone who wants to learn, if you're just in, like, you will be drawn to the art of podcasting and probably make a really good host, but not only make a really good host, you'll actually really enjoy it. Because I know a lot of people who have started a podcast and then just burnt themselves out because it's not maybe intuitively or naturally what they want to be doing. So while it's work and there's still some days I don't want to show up on podcast because, well, it's, you know, I'd rather go, you know, for a walk. I don't know. It's still something I love. And so the second the camera turns on, the second I get a guest or I'm guesting, like the, and it just flows. So it reminds me, you know, this is what you're meant to be doing. It's in flow. It's in purpose. You are passionate about it. So yeah. Totally. No, for sure. Yeah. I think you made a, a great point with, you know, just making it a lifestyle, right. And, and making it, you know, part of who you are in terms of curiosity and, and interest and, humbleness, right? Because we have so much that we could learn. And um, yeah, listening is powerful, right? Because we have two ears and we have one mouth, right? And, and, and there's so much, you know, that we're able to learn, right? So I, I I think that's a great skill set that you've applied and and that you've continued to grow. And uh, I could definitely resonate with when I look back to, you know, my first couple episodes that were very scripted. And now over time, you know, treating it more like travel where, you've done your research, you know who you're interviewing, but you're excited to see where the conversation goes and then ask quality questions to hopefully bring better answers or more value both to yourself, the guests, as well as the listeners, right? Um, Absolutely. So something that I want to move to next is I want to go to, you know, like your podcast, you know, unscripted, you know, you've, you've put out a lot of reps right over, I think 250 episodes You've had some incredible guests on your show, as well as you've also, you know, put out some solo episodes. So a question that I want to ask you is, you know, is there any, you know, episodes that are really memorable that stand out to you? And if so, do you want to, you know, share that experience with my listeners? Yeah. Oh, great question. I mean, so from the beginning, I batched my episodes. So we would get in the studio 
studio and we would record about three to four in-person episodes every Monday. And I, I continue to batch episodes. And for me, when you, you know, success loves momentum. So when I would stay in momentum and have conversation after conversation, it would just put me in this flow state. So what was great is often the last episode of each of those days would almost be the best because I'd be so filled up from the other ones that, you know, I'd have all of this energy. And But looking back over the last couple of years, the one that stands out the most is, is the ability to interview my mentor, not only for one of the first like Zoom ones I ever did, because most of mine were in person in the beginning. Uh, and then he came on again for my hundredth episode. And so I always, speaking about that humbleness, when you have people in your life who you, I wouldn't say necessarily put on a pedestal, but you look up to them, you aspire, you admire all the things and to have them still turn around, reach back and do what they can to support you and show up for you. Um, Chris Harder is one of the biggest mentors I have in my life. He's someone who um, just does whatever he can to help people understand how to run online businesses and how to really just keep pushing yourself to show up as the best version of yourself. So his two episodes there, I can't remember what number the first one was, but episode 100 was uh, our recap on the hundredth episode, what we've learned podcasting and just really, you know, the, the heart it takes to continue to show up in this kind of a space. Um, online entrepreneurship is definitely its own beast compared to even like brick and mortar entrepreneurship. So it definitely can be lonely, but to know that like some of these past guests have been so impactful. I'm trying to think too, I, I know I've had some other great ones, but you know, after 200 plus episodes, um, I'll, I'll, I'll circle back. Cause I know someone's going to pop into my head. I know someone else will pop into my head. There were so many good ones. Totally. Yeah. It's, it's hard to just choose one. Uh, but it's always fun, you know, to hear that from a fellow podcaster because, it is a very fulfilling experience, right? Like the first thing is you should do this because you're curiously, you know, doing it for yourself, you know, to learn, to grow. And yeah. then obviously to build a community, uh, you know, to share knowledge is is, is super uh, just fulfilling, you know, uh, to to impact others at the same time. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to pick that one. Um, but, you know, another thing that I, I want to kind of share to this conversation is, you know, I, I've listened to some of your episodes and, you know, there was a solo episode, I believe it was soul episode that you did on limiting beliefs, right? Which is uh, a mental model. A lot of my listeners are kind of familiar because I'm huge on mental models, but how do we have these, you know, frameworks um, or mental practices as well as mental tools, you know, to navigate, you know, our emotional side, right? And And kind of hopefully make better decisions. And, uh, you know, when you think of sometimes people making that transition, um, in anything in life, uh, sometimes there's a limited belief, you know, um, and, and maybe at, at, at one point, you know, until you, you kept putting in these reps and meet all these incredible guests, again, you kind of said before, it's not about the pedestal of, of these achievements of these people, but you start to see like, wow, like, like there really is beyond, potential of doing incredible things, right? So to kind of loop back, I guess my question is, you know, how could someone eliminate limiting beliefs and, you know, just really take that, that plunge forward, you know, to doing that purpose that they want to try to do? Hmm. I wish there was a one size fits all answer for everybody, but we all have our blocks and we all have our own limiting beliefs that unfortunately will continue to arise as you move through the different levels of your life. So the famous saying, like every new level has a new devil. So there'll be new challenges around what you believe is possible for yourself, but with every action step, you'll create some sense of momentum. And genuinely, if you continuously take that action will lead you to the next right step and the next right step. And so I don't think that limiting beliefs necessarily go away. You just start to believe in yourself a little bit more than you don't. And you use the proof from the things that you have had success with. That's usually where I borrow the proof from. And I put it toward, well, I made it through that. Or I was able to accomplish that, or I was able to do that. Maybe I have a chance of doing this over here. And so, you know, one of my friends who's a, a amazing motivational speaker says that it's kind of that fear and she puts fear in the driver's seat and she says, I see you today, you're riding shotgun and I'm still going to go do the thing, even though I feel 
that you're here with me. Um, the limiting beliefs for me kind of show up in that sense because there's a lot of things I want to do that I've never done before. And so, so many people want to use the words imposter syndrome. And I'm like, can we just coin it brand new? Can you just say you're a beginner at something? You're not an imposter. You're not pretending to know something. You literally are new. And so when you get rooted in that newness or and, and go back to being like a student, if you will, and that student mindset of, I don't expect myself to be awesome at this today. It's my first day trying it. If it turns out I'm decent at it, awesome. But if if I'm if I'm not as good as I want to be, like what it, what an amazing opportunity for growth, right? How much better can I get at this? And so if you have that mindset, how much better can I get at this? Limiting beliefs won't be the thing that holds you back. I think often for me though, what comes up is when I'm not pushing myself to be seen or when I'm not pushing myself to do the things I know I could do at the level I, I expect of myself, I have to stop and ask what is holding me back. Do I not believe I'm worthy of that in this moment? Do I not believe I'll be welcome? It's, it's what is the thing that you're afraid of? Are you afraid of how it will be received? Are you afraid that you won't get any feedback? Are you afraid of the success you might have if you put something really great out there? I think the the fear can come up in any way. And so these limiting beliefs are just there to ask you bigger questions. How bad do you want this? Why do you want this? And so when we can get rooted in who we are and why we're doing the things we're doing from a place of, I'm doing this because this is what feels good intuitively for me, not because this is what I think everybody else wants me to do, or this is the path I'm supposed to go on because my parents told me I was, you know, the book I wrote was called The Art of Unbecoming Who They Told You to Be, because for many, many years, I spent it proving to my mom that I could be successful in the beauty industry, which is one she didn't want me to be a part of. And so after all those years, that's why it wasn't feeling the way it should have felt when I was quote unquote successful in the industry. Where was that fulfillment? I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it to prove something. And so the limiting belief over here was podcasting is also not a real career. There you go again, choosing something that's not a real job, hairdressing, podcasting, <laughs> breath work, like, can't you get a real job? And so the limiting belief for me was that these weren't real jobs. So what I did was I went out and found the proof that other people were creating careers out of the things I wanted to be doing. Breathwork facilitators, teachers like that, uh, coaching online, podcasters who were making well over six figures just from podcasting. I went and I paid and I had the calls and I had them on my podcast and I asked the questions to lead me to the answers I actually wanted, which was to show me proof that it could be done. And that's what's great about the world we live in now. Pretty much everything's already been done and somebody's been successful at it. So you have a model after what it is you probably want to get, have, do, be, whatever. And so it's your job to go find the proof that it does exist, that you can be successful because we can also find the proof that it won't work and that you can fail and that many, many people didn't succeed at the thing you think you want to do. And so for, for me, limiting beliefs, it's just, that's in my mind. I go and find the proof that I actually want to see. So Again, you know me, very wordy, long story long, but yeah, I feel like that fear and that knowingness of like, okay, why am, where's this block coming from and what can I do to work through it? Right. Cause if I take a couple of weeks off from the gym and I go back and I try to work out, like I'm going to have to let me need beliefs. Like, oh, oh, if I push too hard, I'm going to be sore. Oh, this really hurts today. Maybe I should just not take it like push so hard. So the limiting belief that, you know, they can pop up in the smallest way and they can pop up in the biggest ways. And it's your job to re retrain, reframe, and, and just keep pushing through. Yeah, no, I, I really like the way you kind of, uh, you know, answer that question because I think, um, yeah, they're always actually there whether we like it or not, right? There's always fear with the next step, right? Like, let's say it's in a podcast or even, you know, as an athlete, right? That next race, that's maybe, you know, more hill if it's a trail race, for example, for a trail runner, right? So there's always whether it's the day to day or whether it's like the month to month, you know, at any point it's there. Right. But what yeah. I love is uh, the writing prompts that you, you kind of brought out of how could we, how could we properly navigate? Right. So I, I really like those prompts. I'm actually going to write them down after this podcast, have them as a, as a tool. If I never, if, sorry, if I ever need to go to you. Um, but I think more important than that 
it's it's realizing um and 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 I know you're very familiar with James Clear's work is you know with every repetition though you know things do get easier in whatever you're doing right so yep. the more that you are putting in those reps like let's say uh, as a runner if it is like the same route and you know the same uh distance and the same speed then obviously with time you're going to realize oh this isn't too bad and this isn't too hard right but the moment that you take that next challenge or you take time off or whatever, obviously it, it could come again, right? And we have that limiting belief. So uh, I'll say again, I love those uh, prompts. I'm definitely going to, you know, take note of those. I think they're good for not only myself, but even my listeners that are tuning in. And, uh, and I think that helps us frame in our mind that there's always going to be at times maybe fear, right? And how do we, how do we know the difference between you know, fear and discomfort, um, and knowing that, you know, we're always a- able to surpass it and navigate it. But I think reframing and retraining our mind is, is definitely a key element to that. Um, yeah. And I'll add one more thing. I think, you know, limiting beliefs for me come up around what I really coached you, which is confidence or the lack thereof in different areas of your life. I think if you were to just throw out the question to someone, Hey, do you feel confident? And they'd be like, well, right, right now in this moment, like, what do you mean? Like they would either ask you that specific question or they might just, it would be a yes or no. The people who ask in what area are the ones that I love to work with because they know they probably have very, very full confident buckets in some arenas, right? Maybe it's your career. You've done it for 20 years. If you, if you throw me to do any hair, I feel very confident I can do it. But if you put me in another arena that I've never been a part of, and you ask me if I feel confident, I'm going to say no. But do I feel confident that I could show up and do my best? Yeah. So a lot of times confidence comes from self-trust. And for me, self-trust has been birthed and grown from the habits I've created in my life, which is why I also love James Clear in that book, Atomic. I think having habits that support the life that you want when things start to feel out of alignment or overwhelmed or all of the words we like to use, we go back and say, am I supporting myself with the habits that I know I need? And so that's where I talk a lot about non-negotiables and building these boundaries and habits into our life because only you know what you need to implement in your life to have X, Y, or Z. And so if you're not giving yourself that, if you're not trusting yourself enough to support yourself, you're going to feel very limited in your beliefs because you don't even trust that you'll do the things you say you're going to do. And so it starts for very simple little things, right? Stay off your phone in the morning, wake up at a certain time, go to the gym. Like you said, you will. I make jokes on social. Like nobody cares if I go to the gym in the morning. No one, I don't win an award. Nobody's patting me on the back, you know, but actually everyone is better for it because I'm the highest version of myself. I bring the energy that people know me for because I go and take care of myself. So Habits to me are like the foundational piece of all of those things, right? Limiting beliefs, fear, confidence, like it it literally stems from, um, you know, from that place. But again, you have to ask yourself those questions that we talked about earlier, the ones you love and get to the root of your shit. I love that. And you know what? It makes me think to the more competent we are in something, the more confident we are. Right. And I think that's what you were trying to get at. Like if we're, And I kind of said it before, like if I'm super familiar with that same running route, then obviously over time, I'm just going to get more and more confident that I'm comfortable. Right. And, and there's less fear. Right. But once I go to that, that new challenge or that new city or that new route, then obviously fear could creep up again, even if I'm in good shape or whatever. Right. So yeah, competence and confidence are definitely intertwined. And, um, you know, I want to talk about, cause you just talked about habits and yeah, James clear, definitely great book on it, but, you know, I'm curious to know what are your, you know, habits that you have or routines or rituals, you know, that you've added to your mental fitness toolkit, you know, to keep you at the top of your game. Mm. Yeah, this is good. And again, you know, just because I say something doesn't mean this is a one size fits all. So anybody listening, if if you're not a morning person, you don't have to get up at 5am like we like to. I think I get a lot of pushback from my friends who don't have kids. They they don't need to wake up at 5am. That's just not necessary for them to do all the things they want to do. So take everything, you know, I share with a 
grain of salt as you should any podcast, right? Be discerning about what should be good for you in this season of your life. You know, prior to having my son, I was an early riser. It, it was how I was able to train clients at the gym, train myself, and then get to the salon. You know, I had to have more hours in the day. So I created more time. And by I, the only way I could create more time was to sleep less and wake up earlier, you know? So, you know, we can always find the things that we want. So creating myself the most amount of, uh, time in my zone of genius time. So I'm a morning person. I'm at my highest in the morning. I can get a lot of shit done in a short amount of time. I'm also a projector as far as human design. If you know anything about human design, we can do a lot of things in a very short amount of time. And then we need a lot of rest. So if that sounds like you, you might be a projector, but, um, so I, I noticed that about myself. And so I was like, if I don't get the most important things done in the morning, then they probably won't get done like working out. So I've created these rituals in the morning that I just love waking up first thing in the morning, whether it's four or five o'clock, it all depends on what needs to go on that day. And routine is go make coffee. I have a whole ritual where I sit down, I light a candle. It seems simple, but it works for me. It like sets the tone. It locks in. It's almost like, you know, a grounding quick session. And then I decide, am I in flow? Do I want to journal first or do I feel like reading? And I'll usually choose between the two. If nothing's coming up for me, I read first. It could literally be a sentence sometimes that sparks something, something creative, and then makes me want to write or I'll write first and then read. I have always like three or four books sitting on the coffee table. Like what, what state am I in when I wake up that I need support in? Do I want to read something motivational? Do I want to read something that kicks me into gear? Do I want to read something, you know, light and fluffy? So it all depends. Uh, but I have those there waiting for me, just kind of like, hey, we're here, like use this if you need it. And then usually I'm in creation, content creation flow. So then I'll post on social media from my heart based off of what I've written or based off of what I've read. Um, and that seems to be like a very good system for me. That takes probably about an hour. I like to give myself a full hour if possible. And then it's up and I get moving. I either work out at home or I go take a class or I go to the gym and then my day starts. So throughout that, that, that foundational piece in the morning, if I miss that too many times, um, I'll notice it has a residual effect on everything else in my day. It doesn't always have to be a full hour. Often I can skip one of the two. I can skip the reading or the journaling. Sometimes there's a lot of shit coming up for me. So I'll just journal and then get to the rest of my day. Sometimes I sit and know that I need to create content on social and I'm like, I don't feel like it. So I don't, <laughs> you know, I listen to myself and I don't guilt myself for not doing anything specific in that. I just set myself up to win to always have that time. And I feel like that's how I was able to write my book because I got in the habit of writing that felt in flow. So I would always give myself 15, 20 minutes to write. And it just ended up there, there was the book. So those morning rituals were really important. Important. And then I realized I didn't have an evening evening routine. One day I was on a podcast with my girlfriend, Joanna Vargas. She has a podcast called the get up girl. Um, and we got into conversation around evening routine and how neither of us had one. We were like, go, go, go morning people, but we didn't have like a shut off at the end of the day. So we both created this off your phone at a certain time, deciding what time the bedtime is. Um, and then just really winding down in ways that serve you. So is that like a facial ritual? So I like wash my face. I use all my favorite products and I put on my comfy. It's like a whole thing. My boyfriend, like we live in different States. Sometimes he'll see, he's like, Oh, you done your evening routine. How long do I have five, 10 minutes? I'm like, yeah, I'm done after this. So, and those are boundaries. And you know, those are things I've put in place for myself that my son knows my partner knows. Um, and they have what kind of like end capped. If I want to have a successful day, if I want to be productive that day. And of course there's days where that doesn't happen. And I just let it be what it is. If I can get one of those few things done, whether it's just a walk or just the journaling or just the reading, I take that as a win too. And then the other habits I've created throughout the day are just trying to eat as healthy as possible because I'm human and I like comfort food too. I like to splurge here or there, but if I let myself go too far off of the deep end of either which way, I'm very sensitive to things that I eat. And so I'll pay for it, whether I feel lethargic or hung over from like too much sugar or alcohol. Um, I just don't feel my best. And so knowing, let's say I have a busy day of podcasts or I need to travel, like I'm very mindful of what I eat and drink so that I can feel my best too, but that's all trial and error. Um, and then my other habit last, but not at least is supplementation. Um, I'm huge on supplements and vitamins and, um, just kind of trying to biohack where you can to make sure, cause I'm 42, I'm a woman, you know, you need a lot of extra support the older you get and the, the more that you push yourself. Those are some great mental fitness tools uh, that you have, you know, the routines as well as the habits. And I think the biggest thing to you is 
that you've been able to also adapt and and really connect with how your body's feeling uh, or how your mind is feeling. Um, even though it's good, you know, to have systems or things that work for us, it's also important to really kind of check in and kind of see how we're feeling. And on top of that too, I think uh, it's good that you noted too, like, you know, just because these, you know, mental fitness practices work for you doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. And that's something that I always preach is there's thousands of ways to be active the same way that mentally there's thousands of ways to make sure our mental fitness is kind of at its best. So I appreciate you sharing what works for you. Um, so then, you know, if that adds value to my listeners, uh, which I'm sure it will, um, it's, it's good for them to hear it. Um, so my next question that I kind of want to ask you here is, you know, what is one quote that you live by? Uh, well, I have a current quote on my desk right now, um, that says we can't move forward if we don't pause long enough to see where we are. I don't know about you or maybe anybody listening, but how often do we skip over the current goal we once wished we could accomplish onto the next, onto the next, onto the next, because we're either comparing ourselves to someone who's still further ahead of us. So we don't take the credit for where we actually are, or we're moving so fast. We don't even realize maybe we're living in our current dream that we used to have for ourselves. And so the pause is to just a check in, you know, and that's why every Friday I I do a fuck yeah Friday text message blast to my text community and on social reminding people to celebrate the the win of the week is what I just call it. What's your win for the week? Big or small, right? I drank my water. I didn't drink alcohol. I went to the gym on the days I said I was going to do. And when we celebrate those things, it, it, it just the momentum that happens from celebrating yourself, not waiting for the validation of anybody else. I just remind you to celebrate yourself. And so it's in doing that, that I feel you can continue to move forward with pride and fulfillment on each and everything um, without like the expectations of then once I get there, then I'll be whatever it is you're seeking and searching for. I love that. Yeah. No uh, celebration, any, any win, small or big, I think is key um, because it's so easy to just keep, how do I say moving forward or busy being busy and then forgetting, look how far we've come, you know, whether yeah. it's, two months ago, or whether it's, you know, half a year ago, or whether it's, you know, three years ago, whatever. Um, yeah, just being more mindful and, and cherishing those moments. And, and uh, yeah, no, I think that's great. Uh, thanks for sharing that quote. Um, you know, the next question I want to go to, you know, the purpose of my podcast is really to inspire millions of people, you know, across the world, you know, to not only achieve greatness, or, you know, be the best version of themselves, but you know, to live a, a life that is well, you know? And so my question to you is, you know, what is your definition of greatness? Mm. Well, in this current season that I'm in, my definition of greatness would probably be a lot of what we already talked about. I feel like I'm living in my greatness when I do what I say I'm going to do. And the amount of confidence and belief that is poured into me when I continuously show up and doing those things that I say I'm going to do to me, that's living in my greatness. And, you know, yeah, that's probably, that's probably my, my answer. I like that. No, short and sweet. And it sounds like, uh, you know, really following your heart and kind of, uh, you know, taking on those, those personal, you know, objectives and, 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 and kind of walking like the talk, right. And seeing them happen and, and then also celebrating them, right? Which is what what you just sh shared earlier on. Um, you know, my next question that I ask all my guests is, you know, now that you have a feel of, you know, my podcast and, you know, its mission and, and kind of what, uh, you know, I'm striving towards with this community, you know, who is a future guest, you know, someone that you know personally that you would love to see on this show? Mm. Well, I think my mentor, Chris Harder, would probably make an, an amazing guest for your show. He's a philanthropist and, and definitely is someone I've learned a ton from. Um, his wife as well. She's amazing. They're they're so different, but so similar in their in their ways that they show up and really pour into other people to get that greatness out of them and to show them what's possible for them. I have a list I could give you. Lots and lots of amazing people. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have had an opportunity to work with or be a part of something that they've put out into the world. So 
yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for everyone who's gone before me to show me what's possible. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I appreciate those lists of names and, you know, I, I want to make sure that I could walk the talk and, you know, make one of those uh, guests come on and kind of make your dream come true. Um, so I appreciate that. And, um, you know, just, just kind of moving next, you know, it's, it's been a delight today, you know, to have you on, you know, Jess, but, you know, where can my, you know, audience go if they're like, Hey, you know, we want to follow her work or we want to, you know, read her book or we want to listen to her podcast. Where can they go to find out more about you? Yeah. Our, uh, website for our podcast agency is media unscripted. Um, we also have a Instagram. You can follow us there. If you're interested in just learning about podcasting or exploring what that might look like for you. And then, uh, I hang out on Instagram too. Jessica Bergio is my Instagram. That's also my website, jessicabergio.com. And then the podcast is called unscripted the podcast on Instagram and it's everywhere you can find your podcasts. That's great, Jess. So I'll, I'll be sure to, you know, put that in the podcast notes below. Uh, awesome. That way everyone knows where to go. And it's a simple, you know, a couple clicks away, depending on which link they choose. Um, and, you know, before we go again, like I really appreciate having you on, on the show, talking to you, you know, unpacking, you know, your craft as well as life lessons, but is there anything else that you want to kind of share with my listeners before we sign off? Yeah. I mean, if anything resonated that we talked about on the show today, be sure to reach out, let Ben know the validation is one of those things that as a podcaster feedback is so important and we love hearing from our listeners. And so that just means the world to us. If you tag us or share anything that was like an aha moment or something that resonated really deeply with you on the show, um, it definitely means the world when we get to hear from you for sure. Um, but, but as far as what I have going on and, and all of that, and what I want to leave you guys with I want to remind you that your voice is very powerful and that even if a podcast isn't the next step for you in your business, you have a little stage in your pocket all the time called your phone and you can pull it out anytime you want and you can share your message or what's on your heart in a true form. It doesn't have to have any frameworks. There doesn't have to be strategy behind it and you don't have to have an end goal with it. You can just start to speak your truth and share what means something to you and know that it will resonate with the right people and hopefully it will get rid of the wrong people. So you don't have to be anything other than what you already are. I think if someone had really drove that home for me, I might've spent more time exploring who I really was rather than trying to be a version of somebody else I thought people wanted me to be. And, you know, if podcasting is your thing, remember that no one can tell the story like you can. Your experiences are your own. And it's maybe the one thing in the exact way you're going to share it that somebody else needs to hear in order to take action or to feel less alone or to feel more connected to themselves. So don't think that your experiences don't count. Um, Yeah, that's probably how I'd like to leave it. Thanks, Ben. I love that. Well, there's no better way to end than there. Uh, so again, thanks so much, Jess. Pleasure to chat with you today. Thanks, man.